Our first uh, speaker is Yao Bano from Afghanistan. And Yao Bano is a woman activist. She works in hiding with her pen and ink to raise her voice for Afghan women and girls. And we're going to see a video. This is Yael from Afghanistan. Thank you, WDR, for inviting me to have an update report about women's situation under the Taliban control. Today, I am talking from a country where it's a crime to be a woman, and it is hardly a day goes by without more bad news and restriction on women. The suffering that Afghan women have suffered, women have not suffered in any other land in history. Today, I am presenting the report from a country which women don't have access to their essential right of education, work, or free movement. But if a woman asks about your own right, the answer will be beating, arresting, or killing. I am raising my voice for Afghan women and girls from a country which the Minister of Higher Education said those who write or talk or resist against Taliban deserve to be murdered. This includes both online and offline criticisms of the regime. So, they actively search for every single home and even searching the laptop, phone and all private things to see and find who is working against them. If yes, then they will arrest beat or kill them but no one have the right to complain but taliban don't know that to this women are not like women during 1996 till 2001. to this woman is strongly believed to an educated mother built a strong nation and they are stronger than their destruction women don't get fear Afghan women get stronger day by day against them. An Afghan woman raise their voices to want their own essential right of education, work, and free movement. Today, I am here to tell you there is no human right, there is no woman right in Afghanistan under the Taliban control. From inside Afghanistan, I plead you, don't forget us. My story is the story of thousand other women who live under the Taliban control. Afghan women are heroes. We are dying every day, but we are never given up. Since the Taliban regime overtook the country in mid-August 2021, Afghanistan's record on women's rights has been manifestly one of, if not the worst, worldwide. Despite promises to uphold women's rights in line with Sharia law, from the every first week of its rule, the Taliban started suppressing the right of their citizens, with women the main target of restriction, as well as prohibiting women and girls from traveling without the male relative. The Taliban have also denied them primary education banned them from numerous public places and restricted their employment to healthcare and primary education. In December 2022, women were also banned from working for non-governmental organization in most sectors. Then in early April 2023, the Taliban extended the ban to include Afghan women working for the United Nations mission in the country. This crackdown on women rights has attracted considerable international condemnation, including from Muslim state. In response to the regressive policies, many international donors have reduced or threatened to hold their humanitarian assistance, upon which the country is strongly reliant. It is feared that women could unintentionally be the most impacted by this reduction or suspension of humanitarian aid. Afghanistan is not the only country where women's rights are being ruled back, but what is happening in Afghanistan is an alarm bell for all of us. It shows how decades of progress on gender equality and women's rights can be literally wiped out in a month. As you read or watch, the news about women's rights in Afghanistan, unfortunately, the all is correct news. Today, Afghanistan is at a critical juncture. It is the only country in the world 
where women don't have access to their basic rights. There are countless unsolved problems facing Afghan women, but because of distraction, women can share their stories with each other. And on another side, there's no ear, no organization, and no group to hear the problem of Afghan women. Afghan women are entirely isolated. To make sense of this moment, it helped to discuss the Taliban story. I'll start with the year I was born. I was newborn baby during the Taliban first time of power in Afghanistan, and I wasn't aware of how women were treated then. But last year, my grandma, my mother, and my sister helped to reopen a old box of burqa, which they picked away 20 years ago. They told me unbelievable stories about the horrible ways where women were treated. My grandma shared how Taliban entered to Afghanistan for the first time. They entered to Afghanistan, which at that time, a full men and women were educated. The Taliban used from name of Islam and the conditions of traditional society to many bullet and educated people. They were particularly cruel to women. People can just forget or forgive all the killing. My grandma said almost every family in Afghanistan now knows of somebody or has a family member who was killed by the Taliban. The Golden Years 2001 up to 2021. Despite my country's money issues, 2001 up to 2021 was a golden time for Afghan women. The Taliban was ousted and women started to learn about their right and gained autonomy in their life. I was one of those girls whose life was changed for the better. Despite of relatives' objections, my parents enrolled me in school and I was the first girl in our extended family to attend. Our relatives said that I shouldn't go to school past the age of 12, but my parents said we had hard time, but we don't want hard time for our children, especially for our daughters. Then I continued to school, then university, then I had job for four years. This is not to say women life for easy in Afghanistan. Traditional society, war, and Taliban law continued in some regions, and many girls were shut out of education. Still, life was better than it is now. Return of Taliban, 2021 till today. When the Taliban returned to power on August 50, 2021, I was a 22 years old. Every day since then, I have woken up with a heavy chest. I see the four wall around me and nothing more. Day by day, the Taliban has announced new restrictions on women. Before the Taliban came to power in Afghanistan, I was a social worker in a private office. But after the arrival of the Islamic government, everything fell apart. The office I had worked closed in four days after the Taliban took over. Thirteen co-workers of me were arrested by Taliban and we received messages that they were searching for all other members of this office. So we immediately break our scene and board our documents to hide our identity. Right now, today, I can see the city, the bazaar, from the window, but nothing is same as before. No women are mailing about, and the city is very silent. The city is covered in black. If women wear colored clothes, the Islamic government will beat them. I saw with my own eyes the Taliban member beat a girl with a gun because her body was not covered from head to toes. I hope to have a promising future, but it now feels dark. I want to go back to the past and breathe easy. I cannot wear the clothes I want. I cannot freely go where I want. 
this is life for Afghan girls. This life for Afghan girls is one of the prisoners who do not know when they will be released. Today, Afghan women are not like women of 1996 and 2001. Today's women know about their right and right of their life and have the power of education to raise their voices worldwide to take action. Today's women want to be heard. They want you to know that under the Taliban control, women don't have freedom of movement. Women cannot participate in public and politics. Women are not able to be active in civil society. Women are totally removed from the society. We used to have access to national wide network of shelter and services for those facing gender-based violence, including legal representation, medical care, and psychological support. And it served thousands of women and girls each year. As the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, the system collapsed. I heard the situation is more horrible in some areas and provinces of Afghanistan where women don't have access to internet, mobile, or they don't have education. There are reports the Taliban has taken cruel actions such as kidnapping, target killing, killing by stone, and forced marriages in small areas. Still, we are fighting for our rights. I have heard horrible stories from other women activists who have been arrested by the Taliban. For example, one of them said, Taliban badly beat them and their male relatives. One of them said, We were like fish out of water for several days. Another woman said, The only food they received was old bread. I gave it to my kids to keep them alive. My kids were thirsty. There was no water. There was a bin where the women of the Taliban washed their dishes. I used this water for my kids to drink. They were crying because it was dirty. The Taliban searched our Facebook, searched our call, laptop, and all documents, and they played our messages and ask about them. Where are your other friends? They said, you must help us to find them. We were released by making a promise. After this day, we won't do anything against the Taliban. I am one of the women activists living in Afghanistan under the direct threat of Taliban. The Taliban actively search for all who work or talk against them. I am in danger, but I can't stop. The Taliban are lying. They are just want to fight for power. I am in hiding, fighting for my right and right of other women. I know that the Taliban searching for me, and it is easy for the Taliban to kill to the group which work or talk against them. Because of me, my siblings, and parents are also under the direct threat. We are not safe. I work in hard to hide my identity and identity of my parents. Currently, I am hiding from the Taliban, but one day they will kill me or my family members. Afghan women urgently need to health services, humanitarian assistance, and justice now. I'll continue this struggle with my pen and inks, raising my voice for Afghan women and girls. It is about 598 days since the Taliban banned teenage girls from school. Afghanistan remains the only country in the world where women and girls are denied their basic right. Brave Afghan women are still protesting in Afghanistan despite of thousand restriction and they ask about their right and right of their life. Banning women and girls from education by the Taliban is a crime against humanity. As women and girls in Afghanistan, I can't go outside home lonely without male relative. 
I can go to school over the age 12. I can go to university or gym or park. I can't be engineer or pilot or singer in future. I can't go work except as a doctor or nurse to work in some hospital. I can't go to male doctor for treatment. I can't deal with male shopkeeper. I should wear a long workout which cover from my head to toes. Wiping of women in public for having non covered ankles. Public stoning of women accused of having sex outside marriage. A number of lovers are stoned to death under these rules. I can talk or shake hands with non mahram males. I can laugh loudly. No stranger should hear a woman voice. I can't riding in a taxi without a madam. I can't present in a radio, television, or public gathering. If yes, I should cover my faces during TV program or others. I can't play sports or entering a sports center or club. I can ride bicycle or motorcycle even with my madam. I can't wear bright colored clothes. I can't listen to music not only for women but men as well. I cannot go on female public baths. Woman pictures cannot be printed in newspaper or book or hang on walls or houses or shops. Women must not use perfume in public. Based on the above restriction, Taliban want from women to be all the time home and women don't have permission to breathe without their rules. I didn't give up like thousand others to work and raise my voice for Afghan women, even in a very horrible situation. I'll continue this struggle with my pen and ink. In such a hopeless situation, which school are closed for family students, we still continue to our work since August 2021 as a volunteer group of young and educated members of our society under the name of Yalbonus Group to help female students from inside our home from 7 up to 12 grade of school via online training programs and we teach them different subjects as secret online schooling. Until today, 500 students are learning and graduated from our online program. And also, as women can go work outside home, it have a very bad impact on family economy situation. We still try to help and provide food and urgent need for those families which live in a very hard economic situation. And still, we have thousand families in our record which they urgently need food and humanitarian assistance. What we do for girls and women it all are just friendly and humanitarian works. We don't want to become famous. We don't want to get profit. We just want to help each other and together make a change. Our work is totally private, hiding and friendly inside our homes. And we all are connecting via internet. So it is very safe way for all of us to continue our work. At the end, as we all know the Afghan woman problems very well, so there's no need for more explanation of the problem. There's exactly need for actions. From inside Afghanistan, I plead you, don't forget us. Please stand with Afghan woman. Please let Afghan woman learn. Please help us in such a horrible situation. Please help Afghan families with food and humanitarian assistance. With your help and support, you will save a family from hunger. You will save a daughter from child forced marriages. You will save a father to not sell their body part to provide food for their families. Thank you for your attention.